Row against the Angels. They won last night and had a big offensive breakout game. Nine runs on 11 hits, and they hit another home run. John Gibbons Ball Club has homered in 12 straight road games. A total of 21 home runs during those 12 games. Take a look at the lineup for John Gibbons tonight. Top of the order, Troy Tulowitzki, and then Josh Donaldson, and Donaldson's back at third base. And when Josh drives in a run, as he did last night, the Blue Jays are 40 and 17. And he has been terrific coming up with big hits as he did once again last night. And then down in the eighth spot, Ben Revere over his last eight games has 10 hits, including his 14th career for his game last night. Ben Revere starting to show signs of the reason he won that hit crown last year in the National League. He had 184 hits last year for the Phillies. And for the Angels, it'll be 24-year-old left-hander Andrew Heaney. He's making his 11th start of the season. He was promoted from AAA Salt Lake back on June the 24th. Named American League Rookie of the Month for the month of July. He went 4-0 with a 1.98 ERA. Entered this season as the Angels' top prospect, according to Baseball America. Last time out, he did not factor into decision against the White Sox, but he went six innings, giving up just one earned run. Heaney is a former number one pick of the Miami Marlins. He was drafted in the first round in 2012. He was involved in two trades in the same day. He went from Miami to the Dodgers and then from the Dodgers to the Angels for Howie Kendrick. It was in December last year. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. Tulowitzki battles it out of play. Troy Tulowitzki trying to get something going with the bat. He got hit by a pitch and doubled in last night's game. And a ringing double to the alley in left center. Tulowitzki for the season now with 23 doubles. And go along with those 15 home runs. Ball and strike. Heaney, as Joe mentioned, was the American League. Rookie pitcher of the month in the month of July, but August has been a different story. Certainly had his struggles this month, not as efficient with his pitch count. One thing he did when he was going pretty well is he was pounding that strike zone, keeping that pitch count, pitch count in an area where he could go seven innings, go into the eighth inning one time back in July there, but he has not been able to do that lately. His last outing against the White Sox going six innings was the deepest he's gone in his last four. League starting to figure out Heaney a little bit. One and two pitch to Tulowitzki. Pull foul. This is always a tough time in the ball game for the hitters. Tough time of night right now. It's not getting dark yet. We have an early start out here in Anaheim, 6:30 local time. So it's probably not going to get dark until those middle innings. And when it does, that's when right now we're starting to see those shadows. They're kind of creeping across the infield, but. The time of night, it's not quite a day game, and we're going to slowly get into dusk here. A little more difficult for hitters to pick up the baseball. This was always my favorite time to hit, Joe, because I was finishing up batting practice. <laughs> <laughs> were you five o'clock? I was great. <laughs> Just before the game started, I had my best stroke. <laughs> Pelowski reaches for it and drives it to right. Cole Calhoun is there. One down. Take a look at the Angels defensively. They had a rough night last night. They committed three errors and could have been charged with five in my mind. David Murphy, the veteran, gets to start in left field. It's Trouton Calhoun in center and right. The rookie at third base, Caleb Cowart, Eric Ibar, former Gold Glove winner. Grant Green just called up to play second base tonight. Albert Pujols back at first and Carlos Perez, the former Blue Jay farmhand behind the plate. Albert Pujols in that Gold Glove back at first base tonight. Little trouble last night over at the first base bag. CJ Crone had some issues with a couple of balls, missed a pop up, and had another ground ball go off his glove. Albert Pujols getting a little bit older, but still flashes the leather at first base. Donaldson pulls it foul just outside the bag. Coward at third, couldn't take time to wait on the umpire, but the third base umpire, Jeff Nelson, was right there to let him know it was a foul ball. You can see the shadows and how they. Kind of checkerboard the diamond here. And that ball going to home will be difficult to pick up until the lights take full effect. And that's going to be four or five innings tonight. It's going to be a lot longer with this early start at Angel Stadium. Inside. Dini is not afraid to come inside with that fastball. And you have to believe that's going to be the game plan tonight against this Blue Jays lineup, especially the top part of this lineup. 
Have to keep these guys honest being hard in. Off speed pitch. That's a fair ball. Long throw for Parrott. Down the mound. Two up, two down. Caleb Coward, a fine defender, and when you have a lefty pitcher like Heaney, left sided infield is always going to be important. And we'll see more of those breaking balls. Heaney's got fastball slider changeup. He'll use the fastball, he'll command it both sides of the plate. This is a guy that's been able to stay away from the middle of the plate. He's going to need to do that against these Blue Jays hitters, but that slider you'll see, he'll throw one to get over for a strike, but he'll also back foot those right handed batters. Jose Bautista takes a ball on the first pitch. There's a strike because they thought it was off the plate inside. And that's the fastball inside. I think we're going to see a lot of from Heaney this evening. That's the Blue Jay fans here in Anaheim Stadium. A great spot for a baseball holiday, if you will. Bautista now with a one and two count. Jose 0 for 13 on this road trip so far. Well, you're going to see that breaking ball right there a lot when he gets two strikes. He stays down in the zone with the fastballs. That's a good thing for a pitcher, especially against these hitters. But that's the breaking ball right there. We're talking about a back foot slider from a left handed pitcher to the right handed batter is going down and in. Jose was able to lay off. Coming in with the fastball and they just missed the inside point. They have full count and kind of shown weights on deck. Right three call Bautista called out on strikes. It might have been a change up that he gets in there. Three up, three down for the rookie. Marco Estrada will take them out with Just two runs on six six. And Mike Sosia is shaking up the lineup a bit. He's put Cole Calhoun top of the order, move Trout to the two spot, and who holds to number three? Cole Calhoun against the Blue Jays this season has worn him out. He's got nine extra base hits, including a home run in last night's game. He has really shortened up his stroke and become a very productive bat top of the order. And then down in the sixth spot, CJ Krohn. His last 15 games, he's been swinging a hot bat. He has had success against the Blue Jays in the past. He's got his first two major league home runs came at Rogers Center last year. And for the Blue Jays, 32-year-old right-hander Marco Estrada making his 20th start for Toronto this season. That's following six relief appearances to open the season. Marco's won nine of his last 13 decisions, held opponents to a 2.10 batting average. That's good for fourth in the American League. Last time out for Estrada, took the loss against the Yankees. He pitched well those six innings. Giving up just two earned runs. He's given up two earned runs or less than 10 of the last 11. He has really pitched well, and unfortunately, he had an ankle injury in spring training that set him back a bit. This is Calhoun. He goes after the first pitch, and it's a high fly ball to left. Bautista breaking it down right in front of the warning track, and he makes the catch. 
Calhoun trying to ambush that first pitch fastball. Take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays. Revere, Pilar, and Bautista in the outfield, and they have really tightened up left, especially. The infield, Donaldson, Tulowitzki, Pennington, and Colabello. And behind the plate is Deanna Navarro for Estrada. Navarro making just his 24th start behind the plate, but he has worked so well with Marco. This has been a very good combination. I tell you what, calling a ball game back there, this is where Navarro has really, really done well this season. Navarro is coming off his best year last year as an everyday catcher, and I've got to tell you, Joe, I've really been impressed with the way he's filled in as the backup catcher here. He's done a terrific job. A lot of rumors surrounding Deanna all of spring training after the trade. Acquiring or the free agent signing of Russell Martin talking about the trade of Navarro and which has hung on to him and it's probably a pretty good thing. He's been a very formidable backup. Nice veteran to have there especially on nights like this. Now he's a switch hitter. Had a great year offensively but he has done a terrific job especially with Estrada. Wants his fastball upstairs and delivers just out of the strike zone. We talked about Cole Calhoun ambushing Estrada with that first pitch fastball. Marco has thrown more fastballs in his last several games. Tremendous location. He's a command guy, not going to overpower hitters, just average about 90 miles per hour with that fastball. Comes back and strikes out Mike Trapp. <laughs> What Estrada is doing in my mind is he's turning the whole game over to Deanna Navarro. And what Deanna has done putting the fingers down is he's been very unpredictable. Even up here in the broadcast booth, I try to think along the lines of Deanna, and I'm not right a lot of times. I know what we've seen. A lot of hitters have not been right either. What he has done is he's really emphasized the fastball. Fastball and command. Marco has never really thrown as many fastballs as he's thrown with Navarro behind the play. Albert Pujols. First pitch strike. To me, that's the best pitch in baseball. Fastball away, any hitter will tell you it's the toughest pitch to handle. It doesn't matter if it's 97 or 87 miles per hour. Tough to get the barrel of the bat on the baseball. When you see Albert Pujols take a fastball right there on the other part of the plate. You, he, there's no way he's looking for that. And that's the one thing, again, Deonor continues to do. And then what he likes to do with two strikes is elevate the fastball. Marco also has that outstanding changeup down in the zone. Pujols reaches for it, and it's right to Bautista almost in his tracks. Good inning for Estrada. Three up, three down with the strikeout. No problem. Scoreless after one. Presented by the 2015 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays.
Nothing like the West Coast of California when you come out here. It's a great trip for all the ball players. A lot of players have family and friends in Southern California, so it's always a great time for a reunion. Blue Jays need to do some business. It's been a long time since they've won a series against the Angels. Edwin Encarnacion extended his hit streak to 17 straight in last night's game. He has reached base in the last 22 straight ball games he's played in. I like the way Heaney works quickly. Not messing around. Carlos Perez behind the plate gets in the baseball right back quickly. There's the change up away from Heaney now that's followed by the fastball inside and this is a young man that knows how to pitch 24 year old but he's looking like a veteran on the mound the way he's working that ball in and out changing speeds already. There's a drive to left field David Murphy on the run it's beyond his reach and up against the wall. Just like that in has extended his hit streak to 18 straight. A leadoff double here in the second. Well, Brooke Jacoby has talked a lot about Edwin and how he has to stay on the baseball longer. And Edwin's a pull hitter, but when he starts seeing that head leaking and that front side leaking, that's when he's coming around the baseball. He said if Edwin can even think center field, that's like going opposite field. That's what a lot of hitters will do when they're pulling off the baseball, but he is really locked in right now. See him staying on that baseball very well, driving it to the left center gap. With that 18 game hit streak, he's tied his teammate Chris Colobello for the third longest hit streak this season. Edwin has the current longest active hit streak at 18 games. Here is Colobello. Always anxious to swing early in the at bat. <laughs> Chris is taking his hacks usually very well. That first second pitch, he's going to be swinging almost every at bat. Chris will tell you though that's what he does at the plate. He's looking for a fastball down the middle and he'll work away from there. He's not one to look in or look away. He's always looking middle. He feels if he looks away that he may chase a ball four or six inches off the plate away. Those are unhittable. Same thing regarding the inside part of the plate. He looks middle and goes in and out from there. Right now he's got to think about driving the run in but you've got to think about driving the run in on the right side of the field. Exactly. He's going to try to drive something to the right side. Second baseman Grant Green shading the middle there so there's a big hole. Albert Pujols playing well off that first base line but the one thing you want to do is drive it that way. Even if you make it out you still want to advance that runner 90 feet to get him to third base. There's a drive to right. And kind of shown back to tag Calhoun's got a strong arm. Here's the throw to third. It's a beauty right on the money. Calhoun his eighth outfield assist of the season. And he was deep Joe. That ball is hit pretty well by Colabelle. That's exactly what you're looking to do as a right handed hitter there. Hit that ball hard to the right side. This looked pretty deep. Edwin, of course, doesn't run real well, but it took a perfect throw from Cole Calhoun. Look at him get set up, catches the baseball, but he gets rid of it quickly. That, but that ball is on a line, one hop right on the money. You could not have flipped that there any better. Man, I tell you what, you don't see throws like that very often. A perfect one hop strike. I think Cole Calhoun's not pumped up right there after making that perfect throw. His eighth outfield assist. Yeah, he got on top of it and threw a beauty. Well, you're right, but you just don't see that from the outfield in this game. How many times have we seen this year already throws coming to the plate well off the mark? That gave the third baseman Coward a terrific one hop bounce. Janner Navarro now. Bows it back. Boy, what a inning changing play by Calhoun. Well, sure is. And some may think, what is third base coach Luis Rivera thinking? This is not on the third base coach. This is Edwin's decision. In my opinion, it's the right decision. It's oh, absolutely. Okay. Perfect throw to get him at third base. Now, you get a ball driven that deep to right field, and it's a line drive. You tag up, and 
And he's made a good play. If that throw is offline a foot or two, either way, Edwin's hand gets in there. That's just aggressive base running. You'll take those any day. Now it's easy to sit back after the fact and say, well, he should have stayed put because he made a great <laughs> throw. Well, you don't know he's going to make a great throw. Early in the game, you take a gamble. Pull on the ground. High bar takes his time. Across the diamond in time. And Penasion gets the leadoff double, but the Angels gun him down. Cole Calhoun from right with a terrific throw. He sets up perfectly on line, and look how true it is. One hop strike to third for the double play. Aaron Sanchez's mom, and first of all, Lynn, I want to ask you, how is it that you have 863 people here from Barstow, California, the home of Aaron Sanchez? This is the closest venue to Aaron's home, so we put a flyer out, and I tried to get cheap tickets, so we, they told us we had to sell a section of 300, and I said, okay, made a flyer, put it out around town, and it went like hotcakes. The, I have the mayor here tonight, Julie Hackbart. And I have the chief of police, our city manager, plus grand grandparents, and a whole town of people who support our hometown heroes, Dino Evil as well. I know there are a lot of people here that have never seen Aaron pitch live. Who is it most important to see him pitch in a live situation for you? I think in my heart, the sweetest one is uh, Aaron's grandma, Lydia Sanchez. Um, she hasn't had an opportunity to go too many places. They've had health issues, and a grand my grandfather just passed away. So. Uh, it's exciting for me to watch her watch it, but Aaron has like three sets of grandparents here tonight. So each one of them, family, friends, it's so nice. Everybody has come out. It's just great. Well, Lynn, you've got great support behind you. You've got great support in the stands. Lynn Shipley, Aaron Sanchez's mom. Fuck. Well, that's a great story. Aaron Sanchez is from Barstow, California, about 109 miles away from Anaheim. What a nice play by Chris Colabello. How about Chris Colabello getting the start tonight at first base? But that look at the jump. He's on the balls of his feet. Good reaction to his right diving, snagging it. But then from his knees, leading Estrada to the first base bag. And that's what's important for a first baseman. You have to lead that pitcher right to the base. And he put it right on the money. It allows Marco to catch the baseball, look down, and touch the bag. It's only the 18th start for Colabello at first this season. He saved a hit for Marco with Estrada. Eric Ibar, he's a threat to bunt. Might take advantage of Colabello at first. Not showing bunt, takes one downstairs. Ibar dropped down into the lineup, and he has always hit top of the order for the Angels. Kind of a guy that'll get on base and serve as a table setter, but as I said, they're struggling for offense, and they have put him in the fifth spot tonight. We talk about Mike Sosha getting his top three hitters at the lineup. Cole Calhoun is red hot. 
Saw that trying to jump on a first pitch fastball in the first inning from Estrada. That's fouled out of play. Mike Sosha very frustrated with the effort last night. And he said we deserve to lose that game. We played terribly defensively. Pitching. The starter Hector Santiago walked four in the first inning. Another foul back. We see this a lot Joe with this strata. A lot of hitters are surprised by the amount of fastballs they're getting from Marco. Well that goes back to that unpredictability of Navarro calling the game back there just as you might be thinking as a hitter that he's coming with that changeup. He'll throw the changeup almost a third of the time. It's probably his best pitch. But then hitters start looking for that and then they're late on the 89 and 90 mile per hour fastball. That one off and flares it into left field. High bars aboard with a one out single. Well, Marco, in his last three starts, you can see what he's done. That opponent's average dropping big time, the ERA as well. But that's one thing he's done is he continues to be unpredictable. He's got four pitches. The fastball will only average 90 miles per hour, just under. It's not overpowering, but mixing in that curveball, we saw him retire David Murphy on that. He's also got this little cutter that he's mixing in as well, away from righties, into lefties. But again, it's that changeup. And when you have four weapons like that, and Marco's really found a home in this rotation. And Marco deserves a lot of credit when you consider the opponents hitting 210 against him. The only guys that have held opponents to a lower batting average this season Sonny Gray, Chris Archer, and Danny Salazar. Some of the premier pitchers in the American League. And Marco Estrada is fourth. And everybody keeps thinking, well, when is the bubble going to burst? I don't think it's going to. I think he has learned how to pitch now. He has just seemed to get stronger as the season's gone on. He will end up with more innings this year than in his whole career. And that's a good thing for the Blue Jays, especially if he can kind of continue to roll here in this pennant race through the month of September. There's that great changeup. Why is that changeup so effective? The changeup, he'll throw it to right handed hitters and left handed hitters. So it's hard to sit on either way. But the one thing with the changeup, it's the arm speed that a pitcher uses. And it's just like the fastball. That's number one. The second thing is the rotation on the baseball looks like a fastball. So instead of being 89, 90 miles per hour, his changeup's going to be in that 78, 79 mile per hour range, catching hitters out front. But he really sells it with the arm speed. And there, Crone is late on that next fastball upstairs. That's where you may look from the outside and say, how's a big league hitter late on an 89 mile per hour fastball? What, what was the pitch before? You slow that hitter down by throwing that change up. You kind of lull them to sleep a little bit. And then again, Mark, if he can beat people with 89, you do not have to throw 99 miles per hour to get people out. Boy, Navarro gives those signs with total conviction. Routine play. Ibar is going back to tag at first. Pilar has to get it in quickly, and he does. So Estrada keeps growing a big part of the field. Fly ball to center. He should set up very well in this ballpark, given the fact he is a fly ball pitcher. He's a fly ball pitcher. You know, you ask Marco why that is, and he really can't even figure it out. He says, "Listen, I'd love to get more ground balls, but he's getting almost 50 percent fly balls throughout his career." And he'll even say with the off speed pitches, a lot of times you get hitters out front and they roll over ground balls. He said, That's not the case with me. When they roll balls over on me, they get out front, they pop them up. He wishes he could be better that way. It's just not the way he's made as a pitcher, but he'll take it. Tremendous success. And again, use the big part of the ballpark out here in Anaheim. This is the catcher, Carlos Perez. He takes a first pitch strike. Perez had a big hit Wednesday night. He had a home run in a one nothing game in support of Jared Weaver. In the run of that ball game. And swinging a hot bat lately. He's done the bulk of the catching as Chris Ionetta. Although Ionetta caught the last two games. Ionetta really struggled with the bat. 
It's a tough balance for Mike Sochi. Of course, he wants defense back there, but this lineup has just struggled, and he's got to find any way he can. We see the way the lineup's constructed tonight. Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols at the top. He's trying to create anything he can. When Perez hit that home run on Wednesday night, he was the first rookie catcher to homer in a one nothing game since Buster Posey did it for the Giants in 2010. Continue to see the location of Marco's pitches, and that's why he's been so good. And any pitcher will tell you that you have to locate the baseball. One thing I watch with Deano Navarro, there's three concepts you want to consider calling a game as a catcher. You want to move the ball in and out, back and forth by changing speeds, and then up and down, changing the plane. And Marco has incorporated all three. Off the plate. Perez. He's now 24 years old. He began his career with the Blue Jays in 2008. He played two summers in the Gulf Coast League. First summer in 2008 in the Dominican Summer League. And then he came to Florida and played in the Gulf Coast League in 2009. And there goes Ibar. Navarro has been thrown very well. And he throws another strike. Boy, Deanna Navarro has done a terrific job of Keeping his throwing skills intact despite many starts. He hasn't had many. This is his 24th start of the season, and he's come down a good base runner in Eric Ibar. Quick release, throws it right on the money to Pennington to end the inning. November and you're a huge baseball fan Blue Jays fantasy camp yes it goes November 15th through the 20th in Dunedin you can join Roberto Alomar George Bell Devon White and many more for the ultimate major league experience your package includes airfare hotel meals uniform and four days of baseball yesterday we told you there's only five spots left but there's only four spots left now it is going fast go to bluejays.com slash fantasy camp for more I'm hoping one of those four spots is safe for me they need a left-handed short reliever. That's me. I'm a lefty. <laughs> and I'm short. <laughs> you feel Bill? We move to the third. It's a scoreless ball game. Each club with one hit. Blue Jays have a double by Encarnacion and Ibar had a single. That's it. Andrew Heaney, we mentioned he was a number one pick of the Marlins in 2012. He was part of a big trade from Miami to the Dodgers. That's a bouncing ball up the middle. Ibar turns and he's not going to have enough time to throw out Pilar. Kevin Pilar with a laid off single here in the third. He simply runs too well for Ibar to be able to throw him out. He's just a great 
effort by Ibar at shortstop ranging up the middle to his left. His only chance was the big off balance throw, but of course the speed of Pilar beats it out. And that's Kevin right out of the batter's box. You think you've got a knock up the middle. All of a sudden he gloves it. You've got to kick it in another gear, but Kevin's always running hard down that first baseline. Kevin gives you that effort every single time out of the box. So now Ben Revere, what a night he had last night. Revere had four hits in the game. He was four for five. Revere does a terrific job of putting the bat on the ball. Sees the baseball very well, regardless of who's on the mound, righty or lefty. Contact guy, and this is where they need some contact right here to get Kevin Pilar moving from first base. There's another hit for Revere. He fights it off and flares it to left. Pilar stops at second. Then Revere just starting to show his pedigree. Well, he had 184 hits last year, leading the National League, and that's no accident. He's got a proven track record. I spoke to him today about his big day yesterday, and he just had a big grin on his face, saying, Yeah, it sure feels good to get the knocks. He's been feeling better. Got that big hitch in his swing. It's quite unconventional. You don't see that a whole lot from hitters these days, but he gets the barrel to the baseball. Well, you could see how he got his bat quiet when that front foot hit the ground, and it's just like a normal swing from that point forward. This is Cliff Pennington. Pennington had a sack bunt in last night's game in the sixth. The Angels looking for the bunt. Pool holes on the grass at first. Pennington squares and bunts it a good one. Heaney looks at third, throws in the dirt. Nice scoop by Grant Green. Pennington does his job. He's going to get a big out of boy when it gets back to the Blue Jays dugout. Cliff Pennington did the same thing last night in the sixth inning, getting that sacrifice bunt down. And you're right on. A lot of high fives in that Blue Jays dugout right now. That's an outstanding job by Pennington, deadening the baseball. By the time Heaney got to that, he did not have a chance to go to third base, really deadening that ball. If you bunt it too hard to the pitcher, Heaney's got a shot at third to get that lead runner. It's a nice job moving the runners up. So now Tulowitzki will bat the Angels will play the infield back. Runners at second and third one out. Going after that first pitch Tulowitzki starting to get a little more aggressive on those fastballs. Starting to feel more comfortable starting to get more aggressive but let's watch this whole at bat that time Carlos kept. Carlos Perez the catcher getting inside and they're going to do probably the same thing here is try to bury that fastball from Heaney in on the hands of Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki faced Heaney earlier in the season. When he was with Colorado he had a single drove in a run. Gets a piece of it stays alive pretty good pitch from Heaney. That's the slider from Eni going down and in and this is where Troy just has to keep the baseball in the middle of the field even a weak ground ball past the pitcher scores a run right here. This is situational hitting 101 right here. This is what Jip Brick Jacoby talks about all the time finding a way to cash in that runner from third. Coming in again. Off the plate inside. It's very impressive to see that from a young pitcher, the 24 year old. He is clearly showing he has no fear about throwing the fastball inside to the Blue Jays hitters. It gets them conscious of that fastball, and now they almost have to think in there, and now he can own the outer part of the plate. Let's see if it goes back away now. And he made his debut last year while pitching for Miami on June 19th. The risky gets a piece of that off speed pitch. Watch the catcher Carlos Perez here threw a little deke out there. He's saying, "Hey, give me the high fastball. Let's elevate something right here, just in case somebody wants to help Tulowitzki out." And then we go, "Nope, slider down in the zone." It's just a veteran catcher there trying to make sure nobody's stealing any signs. Tulowitzki strikes out. Nasty breaking pitch down and in. Second strikeout for 
Andrew Heaney. That's the back foot slider we were talking about back in the first inning from Andrew Heaney, and this is the one he'll bury because he's going for the strikeout. You want to bury this one in the dirt. Perez knows that, does a nice job getting down into that blocking position. Two outs now. Here is Josh Donaldson. You mentioned Donaldson has faced Heaney. Donaldson had an RBI base hit against Heaney last year when Andrew was pitching for the Marlins. That hit tied the game up. And then the next batter, Nate Fryman, hit a home run on the next pitch, a three run home run. And that beat Andrew Heaney four to three. He lost to Oakland. Has done it again. Three run home run, Josh Donaldson. Number 34. To try to get that fastball by Josh Donaldson, it had better be like the first pitch he threw him this at bat in on that inside corner or even just in off the plate. You cannot leave it on the white of the plate. See the catcher press setting up inside, and again, look what the catcher does. He reaches up to his backhand. That tells you the ball is out over the plate, not where Heaney wanted. He made a mistake. Donaldson made him pay. Bautista shoots one through the right side. Stayed on it and just took it the other way. A crisp line drive to right. Well, Donaldson now has 97 RBIs, one off his career high. This is a no doubter deep into the bullpen's in left. The problem for pitchers when this lineup is as deep as it is, there's just so many guys that if you miss your spot, they don't just hurt you, they hurt you into the stands and the last one right now you want to miss a spot to is Josh Donaldson. The Blue Jays have now homered in 13 straight road games. That ties their franchise record. It was set in 2000. They've hit 22 home runs in the last 13 road games. If you were going to take an offense into the classroom and construct an inning, you'd say, okay, number seven hitter, you get an infield hit. Number eight, you flare one to left. Number nine, you drop down a sacrifice bunt. And Troy Tulowitzki strikes out, no problem. Donaldson will pick you up. I mean, this works for everybody. Some kind of player. Well, and it takes Tulowitzki off the hook, too. Well, absolutely. And, you know, Troy really has not gotten it going offensively, and you know he's going to. Those numbers are there for his career as well. So he's going to get hot. Talked about Ben Revere earlier today and his successful day yesterday. He says, you know, I haven't really been swinging the bat. Troy hasn't since we got here. New teams were making the adjustments. We're going to kick in here. Tell you what, the Donaldson home run alleviates the sting of that Tulowitzki strikeout. And now he can just put it behind him. Josh has taken him off the hook. The Blue Jays have a three nothing lead and. Oh well. Look that, ahead to the next at bat. How's that for picking up your teammate. Two and one. Outside corner. Encarnacion had a good look at him. Thought it was outside. Strikes out and ends the inning. The come out the bottom of the order, getting things started. They set the table for Josh Donaldson. Talk about an MVP candidate. Here he is, right here. Donaldson with a big swing, one swing in the bat. He's given the Blue Jays a three-nothing lead.
Munch and Godblock hosting Mains. That goes tomorrow on Sportsnet World, 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Call your local cable TV provider for more details. Buck? Thank you very much, Barry. That's going on on Sportsnet across all channels, so make sure you check out the channel listings. How about Josh Donaldson? 34 home runs, 97 RBIs. Remember the stat we talked about earlier? The Blue Jays are 40 and 17 when Donaldson drives in a run, and tonight he's driven in three just for good measure. <laughs> he is just unbelievable. Capitalizing on pitchers' mistakes. This is Carlos Perez, who was at the plate when Diana Navarro threw out Eric Ibar to end the second. Perez is from Valencia, Venezuela. And he pops it out of play. Perez went initially from the Blue Jays to the Houston Astros as part of that Jay Happ trade. Blue Jays sent a boatload of prospects down to Houston for Jay Happ and Brandon Lyons. O2. Cut on and missed. Estrada with his second strikeout of the night. See during Canada's color expert sale. Only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Joe, I gotta ask you, how come we don't have a Via Rail Blue Jays Express train? Huh? That was a pretty cool train. That was pretty right cool. <laughs> the Angels Express? We got to get working on that. This is Caleb Coward. He's a switch hitter. Still looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 13. Numbers between A ball and triple A. He skipped double it. Another change up. Second baseman Cliff Pennington right on the edge of the grass. He makes the That's the changeup Marco's referring to. His changeup and curveball is off speed pitches. He catches hitters out front, but they hit the ball in the air. He doesn't have a lot of downward movement like a lot of guys do on their two seam fastball or on their changeup. When you have that downward movement, the hitters hit the, ball, the top of the baseball and they hit it into the ground, but they just catch that changeup of Estrada's out front, but they're catching the bottom part of the baseball, popping it up. Mark will take those outs. This is Grant Green. He got parts of three seasons in the big leagues. He came to Anaheim in a July 2013 trade with the Oakland A's. The A's got Alberto Callaspo in exchange for Grant Green. Boy, Estrada is pounding that strike zone with everything. One thing to have all of those quality pitches, but then that's the extra super weapon is that you can throw them all for strikes, and that allows Deion Navarro to call any pitch in any count with confidence that Marco can be in the strike zone. It's fouled back another late swing from an angel hitter. You talk about a guy on a roll, Joe. His last 11 starts, the numbers are pretty impressive. He came out of spring training. We talked about that ankle injury he had and the success Daniel Norris had in spring training. So he started in the bullpen, but once he was inserted into that Blue Jays rotation, those numbers show it. Boy, has he ever found a home. He didn't make his first start until May 5th. He lasted just four and two thirds against the Yankees at home. He gave up eight hits and five runs, four earned runs in that first start. There's a curveball bounce toward third. Donaldson has to throw quickly. Nice scoop by Colabello. Boy, Chris Colabello has made two good plays here tonight. He saves Donaldson in air as he scoops that ball out of the dirt at first. Three up, three down. Good defense for the Blue Jays early in this game. Colabello with the glove earlier. This time he bails out.
Josh Donaldson. He had to throw in a hurry. Short hops the first baseman, but no problem for Colavello. Presented by the 2015 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. We are here in Anaheim. That's the Honda Center beyond the fence in center field. And the Blue Jays have always had a great relationship with Honda. And there are a lot of dealers and representatives of Honda Canada here in attendance. They want to send out a big shout-out to Dawson Trickett of Niagara Falls who couldn't be with them. But they're having a good time and they are really Blue Jay fans. They started the Josh Donaldson MVP champ here last night. <laughs> and they made sure they let us know. Did you guys hear us? Did you hear us? Yep. Yes. All of Canada heard you. That's we heard you. Awesome. Yeah, great job and great to have them with us. They've been partners with the Blue Jays for years. Chris Colabello leads things off. Andrew Heaney made some mechanical adjustments. He was really bad in spring training. He couldn't throw a strike. He had no bite on his breaking ball, and they figured out he was throwing way too much across his body. Colabello lines it through the right side of the infield. He picks up his first hit in line. The Blue Jays have had three leadoff hits in the first four innings of this game. He's got three pitches fastball slider change up and you see that fastball will average just over 91 miles per hour but the biggest asset he has is able to locate the fastball to both sides of the plate. We saw him do it real well at times but then we saw him miss his spot on that three run over to Josh Donaldson the change up's a good pitch for him. The slider is the one that he'll manipulate a little bit. Sometimes they'll be sharper and he'll back foot those right handed hitters that we've talked about. Other times they'll take a little off and just try to roll it in there for a strike. This is Deanna Navarro. Navarro rolled the ground ball to short. He was thrown out the end of the second. It's always a bit of a challenge for a pitcher that throws across his body, and that means that stride foot is not in line with home plate. It's off to for Heaney. It'd be to his left a little bit, almost to that first base side where he's got to come back across. He's worked on straightening that out. You know, that can be deceptive and be a very positive thing for a pitcher but you got to make sure you can command the strike zone before you worry about deception. And we saw that a lot with Hector Santiago last night the left handed angel starter. Ball on the strike to Navarro. In the dirt nice play by Carlos Perez. One thing the angels like about this young man's arm is it's got that sneaky quick fastball and when you hear that from hitters what they mean is this scoreboard might say 91 miles per hour but it looks about 95 because it's got a little extra gear as it approaches home plate not something you can teach just the way it comes out of his hand as Diaz called that strike on Navarro and you could see from Navarro's reaction he didn't think it was a strike the honor saying last come on I'm working in front of you tonight.
covers that outside pitch there. He wasn't going to let another one go by. And that's where you see a hitter cover that outside pitch, and it was an off speed pitch. It looked like the changeup that time from Heaney. Now, as a catcher, I'm coming inside with that fastball right here because the hitter is able to cover out over the plate. Now, try to bust that fastball in. We'll see what Perez does. There's that back foot slider again. This time he bounced it in. Navarro wouldn't chase. Why do hitters swing at that pitch? It's a good pitch from a left handed pitcher to a right handed batter. Right handed batters generally face right handed pitchers. The sliders and curveballs, everything's going away from them. They're used to almost, if you want to cheat and say, diving out there a little bit. Now all of a sudden it's coming from the other side and barely diving right back down and in. Tough to pick up that baseball. It's a different angle that they're not used to seeing, and especially a slider like Heaney's. And you think of like a Chris Sale. Those hard sliders, Andrew Miller's, very sharp. Took a shot inside and missed. First two reach here in the fourth. That's the first walk issued by Heaney, and he's going to get an opportunity now once again to Blue Jays. Can do some things with Pilar at the plate. Kevin had a leadoff single and scored in the third. He scored the first run of the ball game. We so often talk about this Blue Jays lineup, how deep it is, how they have so much power. But look at a couple base hits. Jose Bautista and Chris Colabello just line drives to right field for base hits here already tonight. We've seen that a lot out of a lot of these Blue Jays hitters. Pilar had an infield single just over the mound, and Eric Ibar, the shortstop, made a play on it, but he did a 360, and by the time the throw got the first, Pilar was safe. There's a base hit to left field. Colabello had to wait to make sure it was safely down in front of Murphy, and the bases are loaded. Bases loaded, nobody out. Let's check in with Brad Faye. Byron Buxton just recalled from the minor leagues. That's his first RBI of the season, and he's been a terrific prospect for a number of years for Minnesota. Just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Aaron Hicks went on DL, and they called up Buxton. Five tool player. He's one of the young players those Minnesota Twins are very excited about. Minnesota moves a game over 562 and 61. Baltimore War 62 and 60. Here is Ben Revere. He had a single to left his first time. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Interesting defense they are in. Nobody out. And they have to cut off a run at the plate. Just shows you how difficult runs have been for the Angels to come back. Well, Mike Sosha is telling everybody right now that we have had trouble scoring runs. We cannot afford to give up anymore. Got to try to cut down this runner at the plate. Two and zero. Oh. Ben Revere, very patient. We talked about his ability to put the bat on the ball. He's just one of those guys that doesn't strike out very much. And now he just got a flare one over the infield. The slider has been a money pitch for Heaney against left-handers, but now he's falling behind. Two and zero. Oh. Three and zero. Oh. Well, the Angels walked in the first run of the game last night in the first inning. Russell Martin took a bases loaded walk for the first run of that three-run inning. Now Andrew Heaney's in danger of doing the same. Here's the 3 0 pitch. Ball four. They walked in a run. And the Blue Jays will take it. It has been a frustrating stretch of baseball for the Angels. Polamello well, comes across as he scores. The Blue Jays have a 4 0 lead. Heaney has been a very steady starter for Mike Sosha and the Angels, but you run into a Blue Jays lineup, you're really going to find out what this kid's made of, and 
finding out early on these struggles. Missing on a key pitch to Josh Donaldson really started this thing for the Blue Jays and now he's in all kinds of trouble this inning. The Angels went four deep in their bullpen last night. Cam Bedrosian is up for the Angels. Santiago the starter last night went three and two thirds. Cliff Pennington the number nine hitter. And a terrific sacrifice bunt in the third inning. The infield remains on the edge of the grass. Situation getting desperate for the Angels. Two and oh, and now Heaney can't throw a strike. These are the situations you cannot teach. This is where a young pitcher has to find his way trying to get through. Catcher Carlos Perez is going to go have a chat with him right now and just try to settle him down, get him back to the base. He's got to find the strike zone. The only chance he's got is to find the strike zone against Cliff Pennington. Hope he can get a ground ball hit right at somebody or pop up in the infield. Terrible way to pitch when you're just hoping to throw strikes. Hope's not a good strategy, as they say. Two balls and no strikes, still nobody out. A run in and the bases are loaded. Taking all the way. This is the eighth year in the majors for Cliff Pennington. Began his career with Oakland, spent Parts of five seasons with the A's. Had a good cut, fouled it back. Bennington was an original first round pick of Oakland in 2005. He's never had a grand slam. Right now, he'd take a line single to the outfield. There's a ball down the left field line. That's going to score a run for sure. Murphy gets over, catches it. Navarro tags at third. He's going to come in to score. And Pennington delivers with the sack fly. The Blue Jays have had the last three leadoff men reach two of them have come in to score and now it's a five nothing Blue Jays lead. Well you just talked about the veteran Cliff Pennington and this is a veteran at bat right here. He's got a young kid on the ropes and he got him to a two and two count. He knows the kid has to throw strikes. He's able to get the barrel to the baseball and hit deep enough down that left field line. David Murphy had a long ways to go but deep enough to score Deano Navarro. Good at bat. Troy Tulowitzki has flied out and struck out. Bounced in the dirt. Jays can really keyhole now as Heaney is really struggling to throw strikes. And this is when you get veteran hitters against a young pitcher. They're doing exactly what you just said. And that's why it's so much an advantage to the hitters here. It's one thing to be a young pitcher trying to face this lineup, but now you're trying to face them on the ropes, clearly struggling to find the strike zone. And now you've got to come into some pretty good hitters. This may be Heaney's last batter. Donaldson is on deck. He homered his last time up. There's a strike. It's now three and one. Still only one out. 
Cam Bedrosian is loose in the Angels bullpen. You know, if the situation is different, you maybe give Tulowitzki a green light right there. Maybe it's a time to maybe break out of this little bit of funk that he's in, but you can't do it with a guy by the number name of Josh Donaldson in the on deck circle. Another walk. That's going to be it for him. Here comes Sosha. Three walks in the inning, including a bases loaded walk. And Andrew Heaney's struggle continues. So Sosha will go to the bullpen early. Second consecutive game. They've had to go to the bullpen early. Cam Bedrosian. The young right hander will come out of the pen. Base is loaded. And he's got a deal with Josh Donaldson. On Thursday night, and allowed two earned runs in his first appearance since being called back up from Triple A Salt Lake City. Pedrosian working in his 20th game, that ERA at 5.4. That was his one in Thursday night when he allowed a couple runs. Just got called up from Triple A. His fourth stint with the Angels this year. He's a hard thrower and he's got a tough assignment coming into this ball game. He'll average 95 miles per hour with the fastball. He's got a slider and changeup to go with it. RBIs in August Josh Donaldson with three more here tonight has taken a lead over Chris Davis of the Orioles. Jackie Bradley Jr. What a month he's had for the Red Sox and Miguel Sano the big third baseman for the Twins with 18. But Donaldson is the leader of the back. He leads the majors with 97 RBIs one off of his career high. Outside. This has got to be a challenge for Bedrosian coming into this game. Donaldson at the plate, bases loaded, just one out, and he's already homered. Not even close. So Donaldson, he has shown his patience, and he won't chase borderline pitches. He has one career grand slam and impressive numbers as far as the batting average 426 with the bases loaded. I think a young pitcher coming in here is knows that he has to make the perfect pitch on the outside corner in doing so he's missed twice. Donaldson had a good rip. Donaldson had a pair of home runs on Tuesday night in Philadelphia. Had a first pitch home run in the first inning, and then later on hit a three run home run in the sixth. Two and one. Cloud straight back over our heads. You and I got to meet the great Del Crandall, the 
Longtime catcher of the Milwaukee Braves, and he's a mentor of Mike Sosha's. He was on the field. He said, Man, I love watching that Josh Donaldson play. <laughs> a lot of people do, Dell. Great to hear some of his stories. Two and two, one out. Got a piece of it, and Perez couldn't catch the foul tip. Blue Jays trying to bust it wide open here in the fourth. They've scored two runs on a bases loaded walk and a sacrifice fly, and now they got the big guns at the plate. Breaking ball and Donaldson pulls it into the seats. Straight back. Boy, he's on him pretty good right now. He's on him. I'm surprised that Bedrosian went back to the fastball. He tried to sneak that fastball by him after he bounced the slider, almost got Josh. But this is why he's so good. Josh keeps that bat in the hitting zone. He gets the bat on plane so early and then keeps it through the hitting zone a long time. So even when a fastball beats him, he can foul it off. If he's out front of that slider, he can still get a piece of it. Very difficult hitter to face, those guys that keep the bat in the hitting zone a long time. So Bedrosian, this would be his eighth pitch to Donaldson. Way outside. Kevin Pilar is at third. He had a single to left field. Then Revere had a bases loaded walk, picked up the RBI. And Troy Tulowitzki walked. Second time this inning, the bases have been loaded. Bautista had a single in his last hit bat. Donaldson just waits back and fights that pitch off. And that's what you can see him doing, letting that ball travel. He's guarding against the slider. He does not want to chase a slider down in the dirt. For strike three, so he's making sure he allows that ball to travel. But it must be nice to have the ability to allow a 94, 96 mile per hour fastball travel. But again, that's why he is so special. If you're a catcher putting the fingers down right here. You just don't know where to go. You've really tried everything. You've used a just off the plate and covered down. You can see the hesitation from Perez. He was thinking about where to go. <laughs> I don't blame him. Not a good feeling. Three and two, one out. Base hit, right field. Pilar's in to score. Here comes Revere. Calhoun with that strong arm. Not this time. 99 RBIs for Donaldson, a new career high. What an at-bat. Just not fair. Josh Donaldson against the youngster Canberra Drosian. He went right back to the fastball. Talk about how he lets that ball travel, lets it get deep. How about this? He lets that fastball travel in deep. He just drives it into right field for a lousy single and a couple of RBIs. This is how you drive in runs. He's done it so many ways. Everybody's looking for Josh Donaldson to put another one in the seats. No, he's just going to go the other way for a couple ribbies. That ball gets away from Perez, and the runners are going to move up. Boy, the wheels have fallen off for the Angels here in the fourth. The Blue Jays have chased the starter. For a second consecutive night, they're into the bullpen in the fourth. 
And so she's visibly upset. That ball gets away from Perez and eliminates the double play opportunity. Well, it just can't happen either. That ball's breaking ball. When you call that, you have to anticipate the ball being in the dirt. And he's just late getting to his spot. When he gets there, the glove comes up. That glove's got to be buried into the ground to cover that five hole. That's the seventh pass ball charged to Perez. Bautista drives it high and deep to right. Get up, ball, and is off the wall. Tulowitzki's going to score. Here comes Donaldson right behind him. Bautista's headed for third. Here's the throw, not in time. A two run triple for Jose Bautista. His third triple. Another monster inning for the Blue Jays. About these Toronto Blue Jays hitters going the other way, and this is why they're so difficult to pitch to. You think of this top of the lineup. You think of Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion, and the ability for them to hit the ball out of the park. No, I'm just going to take this fastball out over the plate and drive it the other way. These pitchers are just at a loss as to how to pitch to these hitters. The infield now has to come in. It's nine to nothing. The Blue Jays had been struggling to score runs. Not anymore. And Connor with a mighty cut. John Gibbons has seen this act before. Six runs here in the fourth inning. There's a liner to center field. Bautista's tagging. Here's the throw from Trout. It is late and offline. Bautista scores the 10th Blue Jay run. And Carnacion with the sack fly to center. You talk about a textbook attack. A little bit of everything tonight. These Angels pitchers are just at a loss as to hit. How to pitch to these Blue Jays hitter Edwin squares this ball up to center field and what a job again by Bautista going ahead and challenging the arm of the MVP candidate. That's what you do for your teammates. Absolutely. That's a big plate appearance for Edwin. Another RBI. Inside the Colabello. Pick each other up. The Blue Jays have hit for the cycle tonight. Donaldson with the three run home run. Bautista with a two run triple. And Carnacion with the leadoff double and a whole boatload of singles. The Blue Jays have not won a series against the Angels for the last eight series. They put themselves in a position to snap that streak. Colabello started the inning off with a single to right. It was the 10th Blue Jay to bat in this inning. Blue Jays have had a sacrifice bunt, two sacrifice flies, the home run, the triple, double. And they've scored 10 runs on nine hits. And oh, for good measure, Marco Estrada has allowed one hit. Well, Abello gets his second hit of the inning. Brooke Jacoby continues to preach the same philosophy. He doesn't want these hitters to try to do too much. He knows this is a very deep lineup. If everybody just does their job, you continue to pass the baton. Crooked numbers the most games with nine or more runs in the American League. Seven more such games than the Yankees. Eight more than the Astros. They've also had a seven run inning. It's the 22nd time this season they've had a five run inning or more. And as Jacoby talks about you can't just do it with one or two boppers. This speaks to the depth of this Blue Jays lineup. 
And you know what, Joe? We haven't heard a giddy word out of anybody's mouth. It is 100% business. They know where they're at. They know there's a lot of baseball to be played. Janet Navarro batting left handed takes one down and away. You get that feeling when you get that star power in this Blue Jays clubhouse right now. You get a lot of veterans, many now who have been to the postseason. This is a different crew than the Blue Jays have outfitted in recent years. There's a liner to left. That'll get down for a base hit. Navarro has joined the hit parade. Mike Butcher, a pitching coach, out to you the mound quickly. Just a nice piece of hitting here by Deanna Navarro. This pitch out over the plate and again we always use that term not trying to do too much well that what that means is allowing the ball to get deeper in your stance and taking that base hit the other way and that's just a great swing path by the there's a lot of hitters when you get ahead in the count like that where they get a little pole happy and they want to drive something into the right center gap not Navarro and that's exactly what we mean by passing the baton do what you can do shoot a base hit the other way let the next guy come up and do his job now. Kevin Pillar will be the 12th J to bat this inning. He had a single earlier in the inning. He is two for two on the night. Inside strike. The message from a pitching coach in a situation like this is hey, we got to have your. Give us some innings. Well, and the other message too is we finally saw a fastball inside. We haven't seen many of them. We thought we saw a few early by Andrew Heaney, but then he started missing his spots. Well, our pops it into right field. Calhoun comes in, and the inning is over. But the Blue Jays put up a seven spot in the fourth. Josh Donaldson with a big opposite field single. He has driven in five tonight. He's got 99 ribbies. He leads the majors in that department. September 2nd, 1990, when he threw the only no-hitter in franchise history. Tune in Sunday, August 30th at 12 noon Eastern time for Dave Steve, Almost Perfect. A special looks back at the game's significant moments as shared by some of the participants, including Dave Steve himself. A memory, Buck, that will be lasting in our minds for many, many years. That was a terrific season for Dave. Not only did he pitch the only no hitter in franchise history, but he had his finest season. He went 18 and 6, the most wins he ever accumulated in a single season. It'll be an interesting watch. Josh Donaldson's been an interesting watch all season long. He has driven in five tonight. 
And we're in the fourth inning. Cole Calhoun find out to right field on the first pitch he saw tonight. It seemed like that seven run inning was a long inning but it only took 17 minutes. So Estrada didn't have as long a wait on the bench as you might have thought last night's top of the first took 25 minutes and the Blue Jays only scored three runs. Eric Ibarb has the only hit for the Angels, and he was thrown out by Deanna Navarro trying to steal in the second. So Estrada has faced the minimum through three innings. Change up. Calhoun fouls it back. Marco. Pitched in Washington a bit, but the majority of his big league experience came with the Milwaukee Brewers. And he had a pretty good catcher over there in Jonathan Lucroy. But he wasn't disrespectful at all to Lucroy, but he talked about these two catchers with the Blue Jays really helping him. And he said, when I throw to either Russell Martin or Deanna Navarro, they're two and three pitches ahead of where I'm thinking. Catchers can do that too. As catchers, you've got the best seat in the house as to what his balls are doing, what the pitches are doing, the movement, the location. Sometimes pitchers don't trust their stuff. But he's alluded to that. Both Navarro and Martin reading his pitches, understanding what he's doing, and suggesting some better things to even do. And that's where Marco has really put it in the hands of his catchers, putting the fingers down back there. And I think that's one reason why we're starting to see increased fastball usage at times from Estrada, trusting that fastball. And of course, he's got the tremendous location. Trying to come inside here, and they just missed. That was interesting. He called for a changeup and he called for it inside. Inside. It's interesting because most of the changeups are thrown away because you want that hitter to be out in front on that front foot. It's a high fly ball to right. Bautista jogs toward it, gets there. Calhoun's read time. Well, sometimes you throw that change up inside. I'm trying to think on the same lines as Navarro. You get Calhoun looking in there, and now that fastball, he's got that little toe tap. A lot of hitters will use that as a timing mechanism. And Calhoun with that little toe tap, the timing is there. But then all of a sudden, we, again, we talk about these pitches from Marco Estrada, and 89 and 90 can get on you in a hurry. And then that's that little defense mechanism by coming underneath the baseball. Mike Trout he is three for his last ten, but he struck out against Estrada in the first. Chad went through an 0 for 13 stretch prior to his last ten at bats. Trout last night was 0 for 3 with a walk, and he struck out twice. Both of his strikeouts came. At the hand of that man right there, David Price. Price had nine strikeouts in eight innings of work. This popped up and into the seats. See that pitch again from Estrada. That ball is beating him. We talked last night a lot about Mike Trout and his strengths as a hitter, just like Donaldson, letting that ball get deep. But you see Trout there, 89 miles per hour, and that ball's just on him. And then it's almost that emergency tr plan trying to execute to catch up to that fastball, and he's coming underneath it. Another yeah, foul in the seats. The great Hall of Fame of Tom Seaver always says there are three elements to pitching movement, velocity, and location. And he always said velocity is the least important. Exactly. And I think when we watch Mark Burley pitch, 
proof in the pudding. Mark was another one, though, not overpowering. But location's so important, they'll take movement second, and Velocity third. That changeup is cued right off the end of the bat. And it's a frustrating at bat. When you bat against Mark Burley, you feel like you're always going to get a hit. But he always makes sure he dictates when you make contact. Right, and he's always going to keep you off balance. He'll do the same thing. He'll run that little cutter in there. It's only 82 83, but he'll jam right handed batters. This is pulled down the left side, and you can see Trout, his timing is all messed up right now. He's late on the fastball. Now he's out front of the off speed pitches, and really, as a pitcher and catcher, you've got him right where you want him. Now you're just trying to put him away, but that's why hitting is all about timing, and when your timing's not there, that's what the pitcher's job is to do is upset that timing. DeAndre with a little shake of the head. When you do that as a catcher, you want the pitcher to do the same. Get that hitter thinking. Laz Diaz wants Estrada to step off. Trout had asked for time. And Navarro just nods. Throw me that last pitch I call. And he does. Marco's pounding the strike zone right now with all his different pitches. But Trout just unable to square anything up. This might be a time to throw that curveball. We haven't seen many curveballs and giving that different look. It'll be a lot slower. It'll have a bigger break, of course. I'll throw that front door cutter. Boy, look at all those balls in the zone. He is filling up that strike zone. And that front door cutter, what DeAndre is trying to do right there, he's trying to start that in off the plate and just have it cut back onto the inside corner. It was down, but just missed. Again, Trout on a 3 2 count late. Marco Estrada, we mentioned last night that he went to Long Beach State. Tulowitzki played with Estrada at Long Beach State, and their coach, Mike Weathers, is here tonight. Changeup. He strikes him out. Two down now, Albert Pujols, who began his career. With the St. Louis Cardinals and what a career it was in the Midwest. Well, it certainly was and that's when he racked up all kinds of numbers. Not as much success as an angel, but. With Albert, he's fought injuries a lot of his career, but especially as you get a little bit older, it's tough to recoup and recover from those injuries and you see those numbers now slowly coming down. Signed a big deal here out in Anaheim. Very good numbers. For Pujols, the only thing that's down from his norm is the batting average of 251. The 33 home runs, he's had a bounce back season in the power department. But while he was with the Cardinals, he was the premier hitter in all of baseball. Power average, he did it all. There's a strike. His first 10 years with the Cardinals, over 300, many of those years in that 330 to 360 range. Pulled on the ground, pass down, and in the left field. Pull holds his aboard with a two out single. That's just the second hit of the night for the Angels. We mentioned Mike Weathers, the coach at Cast at Long Beach State, where Estrada pitched. He said, I can't be more proud of Marco Estrada for a guy that came to our program as a junior, pitched one year at Long Beach State, made himself into a big leaguer. I asked Weathers how many major leaguers he had right now, and Weathers coached at Long Beach State for eight years. He's got 13 major leaguers right now that. Played ball at Long Beach State. There are four of them in the ballpark tonight. Estrada Tulowitzki, Jared Weaver, and Cesar Ramos in the Angels bullpen. The baseball factory. 
David Murphy with a ball and a strike. Pujols at first, and Colabello is playing behind him. Strike two. The Blue Jays just putting up crooked numbers once again. Three runs in the third, seven runs in the fourth. Donaldson will give it a look, but it's well back out play. In the last eight series against the Angels, the Blue Jays have lost four and split four. And they haven't won a series against Mike Sosha's ball club since 2011. Fly ball to center. Pilar came in and it's over his head. Pool horses around second. He is being waved around third. And Turowitzki won't make a throw. Pilar got fooled on that. He took a fatal step in, and the ball sailed over his head up against the wall in second. Pool scores all the way from first. Murphy picks up his 35th RBI of the season. Ball hit pretty hard off the bat of David Murphy. It's a tough read for an outfielder. That line shot right at you, and that's what Kevin Clark made the one big mistake, and that's coming in when you have not gotten a clean read on that baseball. And he knew right away he just turned around and started running to recoup. We don't see that a whole lot of Kevin played an outstanding center field this year for the Blue Jays. Pete Walker out to give Estrada a little bit of a break here. Marco had a seven pitch first inning and faced the minimum to three innings, but he had a ten pitch at bat to Mike Trout before he struck him out. Now Pujols is single, then Murphy has doubled. Eric Ibar had a two strike single to left his first time up. You missed it. The Yankees won this afternoon 6 3. They beat the Indians. Luis Severino, the rookie, picked up his first major league win. They beat Danny Salazar of the Indians. Baltimore lost to Minnesota 3 to 2. Casey Fiend, the winner. Chris Tillman takes the loss. This is popped up near the bag at second. Tulowitzki makes the catch. The inning is over. The Angels get on the board, but we go to the fifth, and it's all Blue Jays. They lead it 10 to 1 now for a preview of what's coming up on Blue Jays Central. Here's Brad Fay and Greg Song.
official team shop for your Toronto Blue Jays. Bringing together the largest selection of Blue Jays products anywhere. Visit us online at jshop.ca. But I think that the Josh Donaldson 20 jersey may be one of the more popular ones. What do you think? That's pretty good thinking there, Barry. I think you're right. And it's probably going to be even more popular once the Blue Jays get back home. Friday night, the Tigers are in town for the three-game series. And David Price will get to see his former team for the first time since that trait. For the Blue Jays here in the fifth, it'll be 8-9-1. Ben Revere has been on base twice more tonight. They reached base four times last night. He got another base hit. This is the Ben Revere that led the National League in hits a year ago. Boy, if he starts hitting the bottom of the order, we'll look out. Well, that's exactly what Ben Revere said today. I had a chat with him just about that. Changing leagues. He said he's really starting to feel a little bit now. But you know, when you change leagues, you're starting to face a lot of pitchers you haven't seen before. Bit of an adjustment. I think we're seeing the same thing with Troy Tulowitzki, but Ben said I'm starting to feel a little bit. Hitting down in the order too is a little different too. It's something that he hasn't done a lot of. Hitting mostly as a leadoff hitter with the Phillies. But Pennington has had a perfect night. Had a sacrifice bunt in the third. Sacrifice fly in the fourth. Picked up his second RBI as a Blue Jay. Well, the Blue Jays have done a terrific job of getting their leadoff hitters on in innings. We're in the fifth. They've had the leadoff man aboard in four straight innings. A lot of veteran Blue Jays hitters facing some young pitching here on the Angel side, and the veterans are showing them what it's all about. Ben Revere is six for seven in this series. And he's been on base seven times with a walk tonight. He struck out the only at bat. He hasn't reached base. Struck out in the seventh inning of last night's game. Three and one to Pennington. David Price seems to be enjoying his new ball club. Man, you guys can hit. <laughs> Price, of course, is three and zero. Oh. And Pennington will take another walk. Heaney walks three. Now Medrosian walks one here. First and second. Troy Tulowitzki. He walked and scored in the fourth. See the catcher Carlos Perez trying to get the youngster Medrosian to get that ball down. Well, Perez will join the pitching coach Mike Butcher. Butcher saw something mechanically he didn't like as Bedrosian. Maybe a little frustration has crept into his delivery here. Really came out of his delivery. Sometimes you see a young pitcher trying to amp up a little bit, maybe overthrow the baseball when they do that. They really jump out with the front side. That arm trails a little bit, and then they're going to miss up in the zone. Bedrosian came into this season as the Angels number three prospect according to Baseball America and he is the son of Steve Bedrosian who won the 87 National League Cy Young Award while pitching for the Phillies. Well the Blue Jays have made the Angel Pitchers work tonight, not chasing any borderline pitches. And it's more difficult usually for these younger pitchers to be able to make these in game adjustments. Clearly, Bedrosian having issues with his delivery, but now he needs to correct this within an inning.
Trevor got pitched two thirds of an inning in last night's game. He threw just 10 pitches, so he's starting to loosen up for the Angels. Kulowitzki, nice play by Coward at third, back to the first in time. Pennington did everything he could do at second to try to break up the double play. And John Gibbons wants the umpires to hold up a minute as he's going to check with his video room to see whether or not he wants to challenge that call at first. It looked like Tulowitzki may have had himself a base hit right here. Nice job by Caleb Coward, the third baseman, ranging to his left. How about Cliff Pennington doing everything he can to break it up? Tulowitzki, good hustle down that first base line, but this is the glove that Mike Sosha is talking about at third base, trying to play better defense, but. 10 1 ball game. Good to see Cliff Pennington doing what he can to break that up. Absolutely. And the Blue Jays will not challenge the call. Pennington really doing everything he could to try to break up that double play. This is the feel around this team right now, and it's passed on from one another. They watch each other and how they play the game. It's good to see in a blowout ball game. Well, I think the thing is, Joe, when you're a game, half a game out of first place, all the little things, they really come into focus. Like, oh, that might help us win a game. There's a base hit for Donaldson, and he has driven in another run. That's 100 RBIs for Josh Donaldson. He becomes the first 100 RBI guy of the season. And it's just the second time in Blue Jays franchise history that a Jay has driven in 100 runs, the first in the majors. Carlos Delgado was the first to 100 in 2003. And Josh Donaldson leads the majors with that 100 RBI. A big night for Donaldson. Six ribbies here in Anaheim to give him 100 ribbies for the first time in his career. What an accomplishment for the MVP candidate. Josh Donaldson just stepped right in there and hit a hanging slider that time off Pedrosian. But he can cover so many pitches. See him gets the bat head out, just drills it down that left field line. Jose Bautista had a two run triple his last time up. Jose is two for three. The Jays now have 11 runs on 13 hits. Inside. Ben Revere has scored three runs tonight. He scored two in last night's game. Breaking ball in the dirt. Well, Angels pitchers have tried everything against Josh Donaldson tonight. Bedrosian with the slider. Earlier took Andrew Heaney deep with a fastball trying to get it inside didn't quite get it in there. He is just covering everything right now. Three and one to Bautista. The Blue Jays. Have lost seven of their last ten games here in Anaheim to the Angels. And we mentioned they haven't won a series. In their last eight. That was a strength. Edwin's chomping at the bit to get up to the plate as well. These are the nights you want to just keep on swinging. Now Teast on the three-two pitch fouls it back over the screen and out of play. One hundred RBIs and that's the plateau all oh, power hitters want to reach Donaldson has done it tonight for the first time in his career. He drove in ninety eight last year. With twenty nine home runs for Oakland. Breaking ball strike three. Bedrosian. Gets Bautista. With that curveball. 
Blue Jays get another run here in the fifth. Josh Donaldson has driven in six of the Blue Jays' 11 runs this time. He waits back on a breaking ball. He's only a triple shy of the cycle, and he's driven in six. And Manchester City tomorrow on Sportsnet World, 10:30 a.m. Eastern, 7:30 Pacific, on Sportsnet World. To subscri subscribe, call your local TV provider. Bye. Thank you very much, Barry. We have moved to the bottom of the fifth. Marco Estrada has allowed one run on three hits. C.J. Krohn batting for just the second time. The Blue Jay hitters top three have all come to the plate four times already tonight. Breaking ball hit high in the air to deep center field. Pilar at the wall. This ball is gone. C.J. Crum in his 13th, excuse me, his 10th home run of the season. The dead center. Strong, as we talked about earlier, he'll mix in the odd curveball. Doesn't throw many of them, but C.J. Crone was sitting on this pitch in this particular situation and made no mistake. That's his third career home run against the Blue Jays. He had his first two major league home runs at Rogers Center last night. Sometimes a hitter will go up looking soft, and you can do that against Estrada because you're going to see a lot of those changeups. He may not have been looking for a curveball in particular, but sitting off speed drove that ball very well. So fly ball to right, Bautista quickly over near the line. Carlos Perez is read time. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful evening here in Anaheim and it is a wild one. 11 to 2 Blue Jays. Marco Estrada taking advantage of the hot Blue Jay bats tonight. Caleb Coward, boy, he's had a good game defensively. He's made some nice plays, including starting that double play off the bat of Tulowitzki in the top half of the end. He has struggled to get it going offensively here, but we talked about it last night. Mike Sosia is really putting a premium on defense in this. Angels Club has really struggled defensively. Now Blake Cowherd has been able to shore things up at third base. They lost David Freeze, their regular first baseman. He broke his finger and he's on the verge of going out on a rehab assignment. They hope to have him back probably within a week to 10 days.
There's a fly ball deep to right. Now Tisha looking up. This ball is gone. First big league home run for Caleb Cowan. First big league hit. Tough to celebrate in a blowout ball game, but he will still enjoy that one. And Marco Estrada left that changeup up in the zone. Looks like he's getting a little silent treatment in that Angels dugout. But you're right. It's tough to celebrate when you're losing the way the Angels are. Eleven-three now. Hard not to smile too though. <laughs> this ball is drilled to center. Pilar got turned around, but he makes the catch off the bat of Grant Green. Two down now in the fifth. Now they're giving him a little love. <laughs> John Baylor, the hitting coach, finally comes off the bench to congratulate. Powered with his first big league hit, and it's a home run. Back to the top of the order. Calhoun has flied out twice to right field. Cuts on that first pitch changeup. That's a foul ball. David Price picked up the win last night, his 12th of the season, and the Blue Jays starters since the All Star break have gone 18 and 4. A terrific run. We talked so much about the offense of this ball club, but it's been the pitching in the second half that has really been able to contribute to the Blue Jays' surge on the Yankees. Ball is drilled to center Pilar over quickly gets there and Calhoun is 0 for 3. So Estrada is through the fifth and the Blue Jays have a 11 3 lead. By authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Everybody recognizes that face, of course. That's Pat Sajak of the Wheel of Fortune. 
He's a huge baseball fan, Joe. We got a chance to say hello to Pat earlier in the game. And he's got a front row seat courtesy of Scott Boris, the super agent that has that box right behind home plate. This is Trevor Gott pitched in the game last night for two thirds of an inning. Scott working in his 30th game for Mike Sosha at ERA at 178. 30 and a third innings. He's walked just six. Only 14 strikeouts, but he's all around the plate. Good arm. That fastball will be up around 97 miles per hour. Curveball changeup. A lot of fastballs. It's not last night, too. He's going to be aggressive with these Blue Jays hitters. Got will turn 23 in a couple of days. He was born August 26th in Lexington, Kentucky. Edwin Encarnacion has extended his hit streak to 7 18 straight. Came in with a 17 gamer and doubled in his first at bat. He had that double leading off the second, and it looked like the Angels were going to have the good night. Chris Colabello lined the ball to deep right field. Carnacion tagged at second, but he was thrown out at third. A great throw by Cole Calhoun, and it looked like that might be the beginning of a rough night for the Blue Jays, and it's been anything but that. It was music to Mike Sosha's ears. He finally saw a good defensive play by his club, an outstanding throw from right field. And Cole Calhoun right on the money, one hopper to third base to nail Edwin. Two balls and two strikes to Encarnacion. The Blue Jays trying to get another leadoff man aboard. They've had the leadoff man reach in the last four innings. Not the case this time. Encarnacion pops it up. Grant Green at second makes the catch. One up. Save during Canada's Caller Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. There's the Big A here in Anaheim. This beautiful stadium was opened up in 1966 and had a great Hall of Fame celebration earlier before the game tonight. Chris Colabello has gone two for three so far tonight. Bellos average at 328 with those two hits. See how the right hander Trevor got really straddles the pitching rubber then he pitches from the third base side. Makes it very tough on right handed batters. It's almost like he's on top of you. And he's almost got a little three quarter delivery as well with that real live fastball we've seen around 96 97 miles per hour right handed hitters. Certainly having struggles against the right hander, and you can see why. Well, we mentioned the Hall of Fame ceremony. That's Tim Salmon in that white shirt. He was a great outfielder here for those Angels in their heyday. They won the World Series in 2002. Salmon was a terrific two way player. And then Darren Erstad, Garrett Anderson, yeah. and Adam Kennedy came out to receive the first pitches from the Hall of Fame inductees. There were three players inducted. Salmon, Mike Witt, and Dean Chance from the 60s. And they all threw out the first pitch. Dean Chance on the left of your screen. Great pitcher. First Cy Young Award winner for the Angels. Mike Witt threw a no-hitter on the final day of the season in 1984. Great job by the Angels today. Very nice presentation. Tim Salmon's involved in the broadcast here. Grant Green double clutches, but still has time to throw out Colabello. Trevor got two up, two down here in the sixth. Many of the former inductees in the Hall of Fame were present on the field for the celebration. Bobby Knopp, the great second baseman to play with Jim Fergosi. Don Baylor, one of the two MVPs the Angels have had in the past. Rod Carew. Jackie Autry, the widow of the former owner Gene Autry, was here. Of course, Jim Fergosi has passed away, but Don Baylor was in his uniform when he was on the field as the 
took part in these ceremonies. John Navarro has been on base twice tonight. He walked in the fourth and singled in the fourth as well. Round ball. Gobbled up by Green. Blue Jays go down in order for just the second time tonight. They did it in the first. They've done it here in the sixth. Trevor got does the trick. The WWE Battleground as Brock Lesnar takes on The Undertaker. WWE SummerSlam tomorrow on the WWE Network. Subscribe today at WWE.com slash Canada. It has been a battleground here tonight. But it sure has. The Blue Jays have an 11-3 lead over the Angels as Estrada is set to start the bottom of the sixth. Marco Estrada continues to improve on his career best season. He has already established a career high with 10 wins. Trying to build upon that. And again, he's only allowed five hits tonight. So it'll be Trout Pujols and Murphy for the Angels. Mike Trout 0 for 2 tonight and Estrada has struck him out both times. First pitch changeup, and now you can see there's a little frustration entering into Trout's approach. Over anxious on that first pitch. Looked like he may have been looking first pitch fastball for a change. He didn't get it. There you see the numbers for Trout over his last 14 games, hitting under 200. But he still has 11 base on balls. Trout is from Millville, New Jersey, in South Central New Jersey. A farm country. There was a young boy here from Millville, New Jersey, that needed a serious eye operation. And Mike Trout invited him to the ballpark. He was here yesterday. And Trout is only 24 years old, though, but. He has gone to the children's hospitals in this area several times and he told me he said you know it's really hard for me to do but I understand what it means to the youngsters and that young man from Milva had an unusual eye problem. He hadn't been able to focus his eye was flittering and the doctors did surgery here in Southern California and the first time he had clear vision. Was when he saw Mike Trout. That's pretty special. Trout went to a hospital to visit him. Trout just a kid himself, but realizing already what a role model and mentor he can be. Hot shot. Pennington was right there. Mike Trout hit it hard. Looked like it went right past Marco Estrada, but they had Trout defensed perfectly. 
Uh, we talked last night about the ability for Mike Trout to stay inside the baseball and shoot it to the right side. Marco Estrada just saw his life pass before him. Put Pennington having a little laugh with him after he, he made that put out. He still is. Estrada still giving Pennington a look. <laughs> <laughs> Pennington. Look at Estrada. Looked like it went between his belly and his arm and missed him. Wow. That's when you can have some fun if your Pennington stood there and made the play behind him. He said, I couldn't really see it because it went right under his arm. Screenshot. <laughs> Albert Pujol singled and scored in the fourth. He scored the first angel run. He came in on the double by David Murphy. That's the kind of swing you see from Mike Trout when he's starting to get his timing back and figure things out. That's not a good sign for the Toronto Blue Jays, but hopefully they can get out of town before Trout heats up. Yeah, he really hit that ball well. That Cecil starting to limber up for the Blue Jays. Pujols pops it up. Colabello over near the seats, but it'll be back out of play. We mentioned Colabella with a couple of hits tonight. He's also had a couple of good defensive plays at first base. Colabella took a hit away from David Murphy in the second inning. And then made a nice scoop on a low throw from Josh Donaldson in the third inning. And he's had a good night with the glove and with the bat. Chris has said he feels comfortable at first base. It's more of his natural position. Of course, he was put out in the outfield a little bit this season, playing out of position, not as easy. That transition, but feels pretty good and doing a nice job over the first base bag tonight. And Pujols strikes out. That's four strikeouts, and Marco Estrada, well, he has really taken an up a notch here in the second half of the season, and that's been the trend for Estrada. Well, if you look at the past years, that's one thing Marco has been a second half guy. Look back in 2013, that ERA just under three and a half, 14 under three. Continues to get better, and then in 2015, that ERA at 2.45. We're seeing a lot of that tonight. That mix of pitches, changing speeds, and really able to command the strike zone. Doing a nice job, and of course, being quarterbacked by Gianna Navarro tonight. David Murphy. The double in the fourth, his 14th double of the season. Marco works from the first base side of the pitch and rubber, and what that does is it allows him to get the ball glove side, which is a way to righties and inside on left handers more easily. It just helps him. He feels he can always get the ball away, no problem. Murphy. Shoots it down the left side, but it's foul. That pitch right there, he feels is pretty easy for him to throw that fastball on the outer part of the plate or arm side. But watch where he toes the slab right here, way over on the first base side of the rubber. He know he knows that he needs to command that glove side of home plate, and that helps him get it in there a little bit better, just like that. It's not unlike a golfer lining up for a tee shot. You give yourself the best angle to. Get the ball where you want it. And he's moved around throughout his career. Pitchers will do that. He said he used to be on the third base side of the rubber. Continual adjustment. Of course, one of the best command pitches we've ever seen, and that is going to be interference. As Navarro got his glove involved, and Murphy had that very weak swing. And now John Gibbons has come out of the bullpen. He's made the call already for the bullpen. Marco Estrada will leave with two outs here in the sixth. He's thrown 94 pitches. And he is in line for the win, of course. Watch this glove right here. There's the contact with the catcher's glove, and Murphy is awarded first base on the air by the catcher Navarro. It's almost hard to fault DeAndre that it was such a bad swing by Murphy. He really reached back and was real late on the pitch, but you catch that catcher's mitt, you're awarded first base. So Marco Estrada, his first outing here in Anaheim in front of a lot of the family and friends. He's in line for the win. It'll be his 11th. Brett Cecil into the game. It's all Blue Jays here in Anaheim.
Marco Estrada showing George Poulos where that ball passed. He says, and there's not even a mark. <laughs> <laughs> he got lucky. That's why there's not a mark. <laughs> Mike Trout hit it so hard that Estrada couldn't see it, and it went right past him, and then he can make the play. This is Brett Cecil into the ball game. Cecil working in his 45th game. Brett's not allowed a run over his last 18 games, covering 16 and a third innings. He worked a scoreless inning in Philadelphia on Tuesday. Now turn the switch hitting shortstop around as Ibar will bat right handed for the first time tonight. Ibar singled in the second, but he was caught stealing by Deanna Navarro. Hot shot knocked down by Dallas, and he'll have to hurry. He throws it away into the Blue Jays' dugout. Donaldson knocked it down, but it bounced away from him to the point where he had to go after it. And by the time he threw it, he threw a sinker that ran away from Colobello. See that motion Josh just made with his hand? That's exactly what he said. Now, this is a former catcher. Remember, Josh Donaldson came up in the minor leagues as a catcher. He basically got down and blocked this baseball. But the off balance throw as a third baseman, you really want to throw that ball to your left into fair territory because it's going to slice back. Did everything he could. What an outstanding job blocking the baseball. DeMarlo Hale calls Josh Donaldson risk taker, playmaker. And that's why he's not afraid to take a gamble. Five ball to center off the bat of CJ Crone, and that'll end the inning. So Cecil comes in and gets out of it. Ibar credited with an infield hit. Donaldson charged with an air. No harm, no foul. We'll go to the seventh. 11 3 Blue Jays. season games live are on demand in true HD real-time highlights live look-ins pitch tracking and much more it also includes a free at bat 15 subscription watch baseball at home at the office or on the go season-long subscription packages are available visit bluejays.com for more details and there are plenty of highlights from tonight's ball game buck that fans can watch on that MLB live 15 at bat Lots of highlights. You can talk about defense. You can talk about home runs. We've had a little bit of everything tonight. Your pitcher into the game is the setup man, Joe Smith, who's getting an inning of work. Trevor got retired to sign an order in the seventh. Now it's Smith. Smith with that ERA at 2.66. He's worked in 53 ball games, 14 walks and 40 strikeouts. He's a ground ball machine. Fastball be around 88. Slider and changeup. He's pitched in four straight games, Sunday through Wednesday, scoreless inning in each game. So this is a guy that can give Mike Socia some work out of the pen. Kevin Pilar has had a couple of hits tonight, and he scored a pair of runs. Smith has been a terrific. 
compliment to this bullpen here in Anaheim. He's 31 years old now. He sets up primarily for Houston Street. Sinker slider pitcher, and that was a good example of that sinking fastball down and in. And that's why he's a ground ball machine. He's got that three quarter under sidearm delivery. It's good sink on the baseball, gets those hitters to catch the top of the ball and beat it in the ground. He picked up a save in his last outing against the White Sox. Barr fights it off. Blue Jays will wrap up this series tomorrow. And they've got a tough customer in Garrett Richards, who's 12 and 9 on the season. R.A. Dickey will go to the mound, the knuckleballer. And there's been a lot of speculation that Josh Toley might join the ball club. Tomorrow. Pilar lines out to Ibar. It's short, one down. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful Anaheim Stadium, home of the Angels. Those are a couple of big baseball caps they have in the entrance to this ballpark. It's an easy landmark for people when you're going to a game to say, meet me by the big red hats. <laughs> ben Revere has had some series. He's been on base all three times tonight. He lines out to the shortstop. He's starting to swing it. Well, is he ever? Ben can't do much about that one. Lines it right at Eric Ibar on short, but that's one thing. It's all about timing and hitting. How many times do we talk about? Well, I think Ben's finding his rhythm and his timing. When a hitter gets that front foot down, you want to be in that launch position back there. I think he's got the timing down with that big mechanism he has to get those hands going. Ben Revere's mentor is here in the house tonight. The Hall of Famer Rod Carew. They were together with the Minnesota Twins. We're here always talking about Carew telling him know yourself know that you're not a power hitter let the ball come to you and feel where that barrel of the bat is and take the barrel to the baseball. And then Revere credits Carew with a lot of his success. Pretty good mentor to follow. <laughs> I take his hit. advice. <laughs> of course his number is retired here by the Angels also by the Minnesota Twins. He started his career in Minnesota. He was a guy I'd sit behind and say, okay, Rod, we're going to throw right down the middle. You decide where you want to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Best chance to get him out, probably. Well, he could handle the bat, couldn't he? Yeah, he was a terrific bunter as well. And he was a little bit. Along the lines of Wade Bonds, when he wanted to, he could really put a charge in, kind of like Ichiro. A little unorthodox stance, crouch down. It's a thing with those hitters that can really handle the bat like that. It's tough to pitch to them. Tony Gwynn was one, of course, too. You go away, they can flip it to the other, the other way to left field. You try to come in, they're quick enough to get to it. Off speed, they allow the ball to travel. Full count to Cliff Pennington. He's had a perfect night at the plate. Troy Tulowitzki would be next. Ground ball. Grant Green takes the short hop, throws to first. Joe Smith retires the side in order in the seventh. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Blue Jays have an eight run lead here in Anaheim.
companion for every baseball fan. Get play-by-play -play updates, batter hit zone charts, and real-time win percentage. And it's live during every MLB game. Access the MLB Live Tracker by clicking on any baseball game matchup on Sportsnet.ca or through the Sportsnet app during the game. I would think that the Blue Jays' win percentage right now is pretty good, Buck. You bet it is. It has been good since the All-Star break, that's for sure. And this man came over. He was the first of the acquisitions to appear in a game. The Troy Hawkins came over and pitched in that first game against the Phillies at Rogers Center. Well, he's been outstanding all season. He's worked just eight games in a Blue Jays uniform, an ERA at 117. Has not walked a batter yet in a Toronto uniform. He's allowed just two earned runs over his last 21 innings. That's an ERA under one. Good veteran presence down in that bullpen when he came over with Troy Tulowitzki. Trey Hawkins has said, and he said it prior to the start of this season, that this would be his last major league season. It's in his 21st season in the big leagues. He is 42 years old and still can throw some quality pitches. Boy, does he bring stability and confidence to this bullpen. Well, especially when you've got some of the young kids down there. You look at like a Roberto Osuna, Aaron Sanchez. What can they learn from him? Just being around veteran players like that. Inside to Carlos Perez. But Troy's message to these young pitchers is to try to be comfortable when you're not in comfortable situations, and that's what they have to do. They come, they get thrown into the fire. He has been in every situation imaginable in this game. Come back here, he makes a nice grab and underhands to first one then. Big crowd here tonight in Anaheim, 42,578 in attendance. Second straight crowd, over 40,000. Caleb Coward hit his first major league home run in the fifth. It was also his first big league hit. Snapped a streak of 0 for 14. Coward was a number one pick of the Angels and had some early success and then really hit a stone wall in double A. He just couldn't figure out hitting and they made him stop switch hitting. He was even contemplating giving up hitting and going to the mound. He had a strong arm. He was a two way player in high school. But he got everything going back and he is right here in the big leagues now. Isn't it funny how you look at the fans and they dive for those hot shots in the seats? <laughs> Scary, isn't it? It's as if they've never felt the baseball. It's they're diving for those things. You and I are both diving to get out of the way. <laughs> but they get into the seats in a hurry. But Troy has got that sneaky type fastball too. Deion Navarro talked about that a little bit. He said he's such got that's such a smooth delivery that ball really gets on hitters quickly. Hawkins started his career with the Minnesota Twins and he was actually a starter. He came up in 95, made six starts, six more starts in 96, and then 20, 33, and 33. 2099 was his last season as a full time starter. Boy, he threw that pitch right down and in on Coward and gets the strikeout. Two up, two down for Hawkins here in the second. It's a devastating slider right there. But Troy will be around 93 miles per hour with the fastball. He's got slider and changeup. You get a lot of ground balls. And he's a veteran type pitcher as well that's really tinkered with his delivery. You'll see when he comes set here working from the stretch position. He really comes set with his glove away from his body. And that's something over the years that he's continued to adjust with. To allow to get those arms moving. 
Now the comebacker off the mound of Grant Green, easy inning for Latroy Hawkins. It took him eight pitches to retire the side in order. We'll go to the eighth. The Blue Jays trying to win a series here in Anaheim. We'll see all four American League East rivals in that month at Rogers Center. It all begins September 4th through 6th with the Baltimore Orioles paying a visit. Then the Red Sox come in on the 18th through the 20th. The Yankees, September 21st to the 23rd. And then the Rays, September 25th through 27th. Go to BlueJays.com for tickets and get them while you can. Buck, hard to believe there are only nine more days in the month of August. Well, the dark days of August haven't been that at all for the Blue Jays. They have had a terrific month of August. They are 14 and 4 in the month of August, on the verge of going 15 and 4. New pitcher for the Angels, Fernando Salas. This will be his 55th appearance of the season. Salas has that ERA at 4.04. He's only walked eight batters in his 49 innings of work. Pitched one and two thirds innings last night here in Anaheim. Allowed one earned run on two hits. Salas fastball be around 89 miles per hour and slider and changeup to go with it. Wholesale changes for the Angels here in the eighth. Chris Ionetta has taken over at first for Albert Pujols. Ty Jackson came in too short for Eric Ibar. So Ibar and Pujols out of the game. Shane Victorino takes over for Mike Trout in center. And Dave, David De Jesus is in right. Murphy stays in left. De Jesus takes over for Cole Calhoun. So four of the regulars for the Angels are out of the game here in the top of the eighth. Troy Tulowitzki looking to join the hit parade. And he strikes out, breaking ball down and away. Time now for the drive of the game. It's brought to you by the 2015 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, he did it again. Josh Donaldson doing everything he can to chase this MVP award, but more importantly, get his team to the postseason. And the youngster, Andrew Heaney, tried to come in with a fastball, almost like we saw last night. Did not get it in there, and Josh deposited it into the left field seats to put the Blue Jays up 3 to nothing in the third inning. Donaldson has driven in nine in this series. And if you're going to say head to head matchup, Donaldson has won this go round against Mike Trout. He has a six RBI night tonight. He's the first Blue Jay hitter with six ribbies in a game since J. Pierre and Sebia had six on May 18, 2012. And Donaldson is the first hitter in the majors to 100 RBIs. He's just the second Blue Jay to accomplish that feat in franchise history. 
Carlos Delgado was the first to 100 in 2003. Delgado reached 100 RBIs on July 25th against the Orioles, and Carlos would go on to hit 302 with 42 homers and 145 RBIs in that season, 2003. It's no saying what Josh Donaldson can do. He's got a lot of baseball left. Another base hit for Donaldson. A four hit game for Josh. We have seen him get a single to right, a double to left, a home run to deep left, and now a single to center. The F MVP chants are going again, but look what he does again with two strikes. Just staying in the middle of the field, bounces this ball hard back up the middle. He's not trying to hit a home run right here. Once again, just trying to get on base, but he's just got such a sound approach at the plate. He is four for five tonight. That has pushed his season average to 301. Bautista fouls it straight back at us. Jose had a two run triple in the seven run fourth inning. He hit it off the wall in deep right center. Pops this one up over in front of the Blue Jays dugout. Catcher Carlos Perez drops it. Well, that wasn't a very good effort. He wasn't sure where he was and reached out with one hand. And that's another error for the Angels. It's an error on the catcher. You think Mike Sosha has seen enough? That's a tough play for a catcher coming over there, but you could see how Perez was just kind of going over there gingerly. You've got to go get there, get after the baseball. You'd love to get some help from your first baseman, but now it's the other catcher, Chris Iannetta, over there playing a little out of position. Yeah, he never really got comfortable, and that's the same way that Chris Crohn or CJ Crohn was last night at first base on that pop up that he missed. You want to get over there. That ball, you know, when it's hit, it's high enough, you've got time to get there, and it's near the railing, so run hard to get over it, and then you can slow down and break it down under control. Perez was just taking his time over there, and in the end, he didn't get there in time, so he tried the little basket catch reaching up front. Not easy. This has not been a good month for Mike Sosha. We had a chance to visit with him a little bit before the game and we were talking about how fundamentals have been a thing of the past. He says don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> well you could just see the frustration certainly hear the frustration in his voice. You talked about it last night. He's always worked around a good defensive ball club. And that's just gone by the wayside here with this Angels team. Bautista pulls it past the shortstop in the left. Bautista with a three hit night. And that air proves costly as Bautista gets another opportunity and he delivers a base hit. Eleven runs on 15 hits for the Blue Jays and they needed one of these. It has been a while since they've been able to have a laugher. The pitching has been the strength of this team since the All Star break. But you knew the hitting would come around sooner or later. It's just too good a hitting ball club. Well, you saw this club hitting really early in the first half of the season, and it was the pitching that really struggled. So we talked about it how often where you can hit all you want, but if you don't pitch the baseball and get people out, it's going to be hard to play winning baseball. That's why the Blue Jays continue to teeter around 500 for the longest of time. Encarnacion behind Owen Chu. Edwin picked up an RBI tonight. He had a sacrifice fly in the fourth. He's got 68 for the season. Bautista with two ribbies. He's got 84. Been a busy night for DeMarlo Hale as he's trying to fill out the Angel lineup. They had wholesale changes in the top half of the eighth here. 
Okay, this guy's in that spot. That <laughs> guy, okay, this guy is. It's not just the names, they got to go in the right spot. <laughs> and how do you spell this guy? <laughs> <laughs> One and two to Encarnacion. Boy, again, the Angels have had to go four deep into their bullpen. They did the same last night. Salas pitched in last night's game. He threw 19 pitches in that game last night. That's the one thing managers are always concerned about short starts and they've had short starts in back to back games. And it's not hurtful just on that night. It's the next day and the day after that. You have a short start from your starting pitcher, and that can affect you for a few games afterwards. That has helped the Blue Jays sort out their bullpen situation because the starters have been so effective. The relievers have had adequate rest and have responded very well. There's a line drive down the left field. That's a fair ball up against the wall. Donaldson's in to score. Here comes Bautista. He's being waved home. Two more RBIs for Encarnacion. Donaldson and Bautista scoring on the second double of the night from Edwin Encarnacion. This Blue Jays lineup just continues to hit. It didn't look like he may have even gotten jammed a little bit on this pitch from Salas, but still hit it very hard down into that left field corner. Scores two good hustle by Jose Bautista. And you know, you can say there's a big score, you can put up a stop sign. No, you play the game, and that ball's hitting the left field corner, easily scores both runs. Bella hits it high and deep to left center. Victorino at the wall, at the track. Goodbye, home run. Victorino timed his leap perfectly, but it was beyond his reach. And Colabella has had a big night. Home run number 12 for Colabella. His third hit of the night. Well, the Blue Jays lineup is just continuing to pound the baseball. Edwin drills the double in the left field corner. Chris Colabello comes up. No mercy against these Angels pitchers this evening. The hitters have been silenced for a while coming out of the break. Not tonight. 15 runs on 17 hits. And two more home runs tonight. Great effort by Victorino. He did all he could getting all the way to the wall. Looked like it may have touched his glove. That's how close he came to that baseball. Yana Navarro gets a base hit. That's five straight hits for the Blue Jays off of Salas after he struck out to Lewitsky. That's about as well as you can play this ball and Shane Victorino was there. The ball just went off the edge of his glove and over the fence and that's why I think he laid there for so long. It's a center fielder. You don't get many of those where you can rob home runs and he was there did everything but catch the baseball. Colobello has 48 RBIs now. Well, this is some attack. The Blue Jays will wear you out. Second for one, no chance to double up Pilar. Jackson throws to Green to get the force out on the run. Yeah. Well, there have been some batting average that have been boosted here tonight. The last time the Blue Jays scored 15 runs was 2012 against the Red Sox. Colabella with three hits tonight has raised his average six points. Donaldson is up over 300. Came into this game batting 296. He's now hitting. 301. Ben Revere with two more hits tonight. He's two for three.
Six for eight in the series. And now he's hitting a respectable 277. And you can bet he saw Rod Carew sitting on the field during that pregame ceremony, and he was thinking, you know what? Let me really bear down in front of my mentor, Rod Carew. <laughs> he has done that. <laughs> Started it last night. You know, and when we first saw Revere, I think the thing that I noticed, and you mentioned it, was all the movement in his hands, and he thought, man, he can't possibly get the barrel to the ball but now we can see how he does it yeah and that's why anytime you see a hitter you can't evaluate a hitter in a few games you need to see him for 10 or 15 games even up to a month to really allow him to find that timing hot shot to Ionetta he will beat Revere to the bag that ends the inning but the Blue Jays score four more runs in the eighth take a commanding 15 to 3 lead now time for Blue Jays central update here's Brad Fay and Greg Zong. And they will be in the Rogers Center to open up the month of September for a weekend series. Friday the 4th, Saturday the 5th, and Sunday the 6th. Friday's a 7.07 game. The Saturday and Sunday at 107. For tickets, which are going very fast, go to BlueJays.com. And some changes, Buck, for the Blue Jays here in the 8th inning. There sure are some changes as they have got a new pitcher into the ball game. Troy Hawkins had a clean inning in the 7th. But now it'll be Liam Hendricks who's had a terrific season pitching out of him. Liam Hendricks got that ERA down to 2.31 and he has just been outstanding. Just eight walks in his 50 and two thirds innings. He's held opposing hitters to a 205 batting average. Liam is currently riding an 11 and two thirds scoreless inning streaks. He's allowed just three hits over that span covering 10 games. Worked a scoreless inning on Wednesday at Philadelphia. Defensive. Changes Cliff Pennington moves from second to third. Donaldson's out. Goins comes in to play second. And Ezekiel Carrera takes over for Bautista in right. So they get the regulars off their feet for an inning and a half. David DeJesus batting for a first time tonight. He took over defensively in right field for Cole Calhoun. He lines it right to Goins. One down. The Marlowe Hale continues to try to figure out that puzzle on the wall of the dugout. Okay, this guy is out. <laughs> Goins is here. I'll put this guy over here. Earning your money tonight, DeMarlo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can laugh at it now because it's 15 to 3, but boy, you get into a tight ball game and you start making some changes. You better make sure you've got your lineup card in order. We saw a little bit of that in Philadelphia with those interleague games. Get those double switches happening. You've got to make sure that you 
putting the right player in the right lineup slot. This is Chris Iannetta who took over defensively at first. He's batting in Mike Trout's spot. Number two in the batting order. Iannetta has been behind the plate for the last two ball games. He was one for four in the game last night, had an RBI double in the fifth off David Price. Ground ball up the middle to Lewitsky dives, knocks it down, but he's not going to have a play. It's a base hit for Chris Ionetta. Just another great effort by Tulowitzki, though. You have to love this in a 15 to 3 ball game. He's not letting this ball roll up the middle. He's laying out for it, trying to make an outstanding play. Gets a piece of it, just cannot hold on. But this is what I mean. We talked about Cliff Pennington breaking up a double play earlier. He's Tulowitzki diving into shallow center field to try to rob Ionetta of a base hit. He got it in the webbing of his glove, but couldn't come up with it cleanly. He had a shot at Ionetta. Shane Victorino batting in Pujols' spot. This is his first at bat. Well, you know, Joe, you mentioned Tulowitzki's effort, but if you're going to pick and choose the spots when you give 100%, then you're going to get caught flat footed. Exactly. And you can tell the feel around this ball club. They're feeding off one another right now. Popped up. Goins, the second baseman on the edge of the grass, makes the catch. Victorino's retired on the pop up. David Murphy, the left fielder. He was robbed of a base hit in the second by Chris Colabello on a hot shot grounder. Then he doubled and drove in a run in the fourth. Reached on an air in the sixth. Catcher's interference, something you don't see an awful lot of. Not at the major league level. See a little league a little bit. Those catchers get a little tight to the hitters. You could almost even see in that swing Murphy took that in defense of Deanna Navarro is a real late swing by Murphy and he really let his hands drop. It became a very long swing and I think that's why the barrel of his bat nicked to the glove of Navarro. If you're wondering how that is scored. It is an error on the catcher. Catcher's interference is not on the bat, so David Murphy is one for two in the game. And he is awarded first base. But you can't penalize the batter and giving him a bat on the air by the catcher, so it's an unusual scoring judgment. But that's the rule. One and two to Murphy. Two outs. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays snap a long trend of losing series out here in Anaheim. As we mentioned, they have not won a series in the previous eight series. They were 0 4 and 4, lost 4 and split 4. That's a fair ball. Colabella goes to a knee, waves off the pitcher, steps on the bag. The inning is over. Hendricks gives up a single and nothing more. We'll go to the ninth. It's all Blue Jays.
Park City energized to go after the one person responsible for killing his friends. Don't miss The Strain, Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, only on FX. Well, we have made it to the ninth inning, and the Blue Jays have had some breakout. 15 runs for the first time since 2012. This is the closer, Houston Street. Just getting an inning of work, looking ahead to tomorrow's game. Street ranks tied for third in the American League with his 29 saves this season at ERA at 2.66. Opponents hitting just 195 against him. He recorded that 29th save of the season Wednesday night. Puts three straight nights from Sunday to Tuesday, earning a save in each of the last two. The closers never like working in these ball games. No, but he needs some work, and they'll often ask the pitcher himself, "What do you need? You want an inning of work?" And he feels like, "Yeah, it's been a while since I pitched, so I better get a little tune-up." Oftentimes, you'll see them give up some crooked numbers in this. Inning without the pressure of a save on the line. Cliff Pennington. Pennington has gone over one officially, but he's had a very productive night. Sacrifice bunt, sacrifice fly. He walked and grounded out in his only official at bat. Houston Street's kind of unusual for a closer. He doesn't have. A real dominant pitch. It's the assortment of pitches and the command. He doesn't blow the fastball by. He didn't have a wipeout slider or a great split. He relies a lot on his control. You can see all of those pitches down and away to Pennington. He will live on that outside edge. Fastball just averaged about 88 miles per hour. He's got a slider and changeup to go with it, but total command of the edges of the plate. There's a change up. Street is tied with Jeff Montgomery for 23rd on the all time saves leaderboard. Obviously, this isn't a save, but Montgomery and Street are similar in that they are multiple pitch pitchers that rely an awful lot on command. I think the one thing so she doesn't want to see from Street tonight is a 18 to 20 pitch inning. Yeah, you'd like to see a quick one here just in case he needs to use him tomorrow in a safe situation. Trying to salvage a ball game in this series. Garrett Richards will start for the Angels tomorrow. Richards is 12 and 9. He's coming back from a terrible injury. Last year in August, he tore his patella tendon of his knee. And was out for the remainder of the season. He is two and two in six career games, four starts against the Blue Jays. To be opposed by R.A. Dickey. Dickey looking to bounce back after his last start. He went four innings plus three batters, was charged with five earned runs on nine hits. And that was the first time he had a clunker in the second half of the season. He'd been terrific. He's been outstanding. You had to figure it's going to happen at some point with the unpredictable knuckleball, but R.A. is ready to get back at it tomorrow. Full count. Bennington's putting up quite a battle here against Street. Nine pitches already racked up by Houston Street. And he wins the battle, strikes out Pennington for the first out of the night. Good pitch again. Look at the command of the strike zone. He's staying on the edges. That ball staying down in the zone gets good downward movement. Pennington shaking his head going back to the dugout, but he's not the first one that's done that. Troy Chulowitzki. He's old for four tonight with a walk. He walked and scored in the fourth inning. 
Blue Jays have scored 15 runs on 18 hits. Donaldson has had four hits. He's out of the game. He's driven in six runs tonight and nine in the two games here in Anaheim. We knew Josh would get to 100 RBIs soon, but I don't think we expected it on Saturday. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> we were talking about it on the drive over to the ballpark today, and I asked Scott Carson, and would you look up this fact as the first to drive in 100? Has a Blue Jay ever done that in a season? He said, yeah, Carlos Delgado did it in 2003. We thought, well, Donaldson might do it in next week. <laughs> he did it tonight. Caleb Coward has played terrific defensively at third. He makes another good play to throw out Tulowitzki. Nice job by Coward tonight at third base. Did a nice job last night, and he also collected his first major league hit, major league home run tonight. Unfortunately, it's going to be tough to celebrate this lopsided loss, but solidifying the defense over that third base for Mike Sosha. Ryan Goins batting in the spot of Josh Donaldson. This spot is so hot, you should get a hit. <laughs> Donaldson drove in three last night. He had two doubles in last night's game. He was two for three last night. Four for five tonight. Garrett Richards is a tough right hander. And make his first start against the Blue Jays this season. We mentioned Richards is two and two in four career starts. He's made six appearances overall against the Jays. Goins bounces it up the middle. I told you it was a hot spot. <laughs> Anybody want to hit in that spot? That's five hits in the two spot tonight for the Blue Jays. Ryan Goins gets a hit in his only at bat. I'll tell you what, it may not seem like much, but that's a lot of fun coming into the ball game if you're Ryan Goins and you can bounce a ball up the middle for a base hit. Good for the confidence. He's been swinging the bat. Ezekiel Carrera, he took over for Bautista in one. Fifteen runs a season high, nineteen hits a season high. The previous high was seventeen hits. The Blue Jays had recorded seventeen hits twice this season. At Boston against the Red Sox in April, and had seventeen hits against the Angels at Rogers Center back in May. But fifteen runs is the most they have scored since 2012, and Matt Haig. Has grabbed a bat. Now he is really pulling for <laughs> Carrera to keep the inning alive. And he will. A little flare down the left field line. That's going to drop. That's 20 hits now for the Blue Jays. And Matt Haig is going to get an at bat. Haig will bat for Encarnacion. Matt Haig has had two different stints with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He got into 30 games in 2012, three games last year. He's had 16 hits in 72 at bats for his big league career. Big numbers in Triple A Buffalo. Twenty hits. Last time they put up twenty hits was August thirty first, two thousand eleven, against the Orioles.
You just had a sense this was going to be the road trip where they get everything going. They had two more home runs tonight. They've homered in 13 straight road games. But Jacoby and Eric Owens were thinking that you know what things are about to break open for this team. There are too many good hitters. Not to have a good road trip. And Joe you know what it is traveling this time of the year in a pennant race where the team is together. You're on the road. You're at the clubhouse early. You're always talking about baseball. Got baseball on TV. Guys are hanging out playing video games. There's a lot of team building going on. There's a lot of time spent together on the road because you're forced to spend time together. It's a great thing. This is a high pop up and it's going to be over the Blue Jays dugout. Out of play. There's a great scene in the Blue Jays clubhouse this afternoon when I went down there. Looked across and it was Donaldson to Lewitsky Bautista was around. There's about four or five hitters. You know what they were doing. They were talking hitting Donaldson's got a bat in his hand. He's starting he's initiating his swing and he's talking to Tulowitzki about the bat path and getting that bat on plane and the conversation spread to two three four players and those are the things you're talking about right there. It's a, it's a great thing and this is perfect timing for this club. They need to go on this run. Some important games here. Strike three call Matt Haig called out that'll end the top half of the night for the Blue Jays have had a great offensive night 15 runs on 20 hits. Bo Schultz is going to get an inning of work when we come back he'll try to close things out here in Anaheim. Let's come out here and have a clean inning of work and wrap this thing up quickly. The yeah, Bo had a rough one the other night, Wednesday night in Philadelphia. He pitched two innings, gave up a few runs, a couple of home runs. Still ranks eighth in the American League among relievers with an opponent's average of just 180. So in that department, it's been excellent. Just given up 22 hits in his 35 innings of work. Good power arm, fastball, slider, cutter. He'll be in the mid 90s. Cecil, Hawkins, Hendricks, and now Bo Schultz out of the Blue Jays bullpen. Ryan Jackson batting for the first time. Jackson took over defensively at shortstop. He started at second base in last night's game. Bouncing ball, Pennington waits on it. One down. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central, here's Brendan Menlock and Ben Ennis. Thank you very much, fellas. That'll be coming up right after this game, and certainly lots to talk about in this ball game. 
CJ Krohn has homered tonight. He's one for three. Hit a deep home run to center field. For Krohn, that's his tenth homer of the season. Ninety six miles an hour from Bull Schultz, and that has been the improvement of this Blue Jays bullpen. The velocity they have down in that bullpen has turned things around for them. High powered arms down in that bullpen. Osuna and Sanchez, of course, in the back end. Mark Lowe gets it up there as well. And we've seen that from Liam Hendricks. That velocity now up as a reliever this season. As a starter, he was 92 93, but now he can come and air it out for just an inning or two. And we've seen him in that 96 97 range at times. A lot of weapons for John Gibbons. He went around. CJ Crone tried to check his swing, but now it's two and two. He's late on that pitch. When you look at the information, we get all kinds of information from all sorts of sources, but. Bo Schultz fastball listed an average fastball 95.9. Sanchez 94.7. Hendricks 94.5. Mark Lowe 95.3. And Roberto Osuna at 95.5. That's how you close down offenses. Another good scoop by Colabello. He's having some night over at first. He has worked hard with Louis Rivera and they have hit him a lot of balls off the fungal bat to replicate that low throw and he's done a terrific job defensively at first tonight. You see coaches go to the middle of the infield during batting practice and the screen will be up at first but simulating a throw just like this from Pennington they'll hit a fungal bat and it might be a one or two hopper but that's exactly what they're doing simulating that pick and there's a nice job by Colabella you want to go towards the baseball a lot of times you'll see guys back up. You don't want to do that. Go out and get that short hop. Make it as short as possible. This should do it. Popped up behind home. Navarro, the catcher, waits in foul ground. That's the ball game. Good inning for Bo Schultz. He comes in and retires the side in order very quickly. And the Blue Jays win a lopsided affair. And they will win the series against the Angels. And that's good news for the Blue Jays. Have not won a series here in an awful long time. Josh Donaldson led the way again. 100 RBIs on the season. He leads all of Major League Baseball. A nice effort by Marco Estrada. Pitching with a big lead tonight. It was easy pickings. Well. The Yankees won earlier this afternoon, but the Blue Jays keep pace. They're a half game behind New York in the East. And they'll try to sweep the series here in Anaheim tomorrow. They'll send the knuckleballer R.A. Dickey to the mound. they will be opposed by Garrett Richards. The Blue Jays bats have really come alive tonight. 15 runs on 20 hits. They've homered in 13 straight games on the road. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Stay tuned. Here's Sports Central.